So the Centroid KP-1 probe is finally here. For the last three years, I've been using the Drewtronics S5000 LED TTS probe. And in this video, we're gonna put them head to head. We'll look at some of the differences out of the box and take a deep dive into some probing results to see which one comes out on top. Full disclosure, Centroid sent me this KP-1 probe free of charge and I spent my own money on the Drewtronics probe years ago. That being said, Centroid doesn't weigh in on the content of my videos and all of these opinions are mine. So what's so special about the Centroid KP-1? The KP-3 has been around for many years and Centroid claims that the KP-1 is almost as good. So what's the big deal? Well, the $350 KP-1 retails for half the price of the $700 KP-3. So that puts it in the same range as hobby probes like the Drewtronics S5000s, which go for $190 for the basic model or $270 for the TTS model, which just means they have a shank compatible with the Tormach TTS tool holding system. Right out of the gate, the KP-1 advertises better performance, which we're going to test for ourselves, but it also includes things like a probe detection signal, which, in my opinion, should really come on every probe. It's an added layer of security against the probe crash, and guaranteed will save you at some point. It's just a matter of time. The stylus on the KP-1 is also longer than it is on the S5000, which is really nice when you're probing deep features or things that are hard to reach but I do prefer the smaller stylus tip that comes on the S5000 because it lets me get into tighter spaces and smaller holes, which I do need to do quite a bit. That said, Centroid has a large selection of different stylus types you can choose from if this one doesn't cover your needs. Lastly, I use the Tormach TTS system on my mill, so the Drewtronics probe having the option of a TTS style shank is really nice. To use the KP-1 on a TTS mill, you'll need a dedicated tool holder that lives with your probe. When it comes to probe adjustment, there are sort of two main things to think about. The first is the radial adjustment, and that's what you tweak to make an indicator read zero when it's touching the ball. The second thing is the angular adjustment, which is what you can tweak to make sure that the shank of the stylus is in line with the spindle. Here's a good example of where the run out of the probe tip, or the radial adjustment, is almost zero, but the shank of the stylus is all over the place. With this stylus, it doesn't really matter because the ball at the end is so big, but think about a stylus like this one, where the ball isn't really much bigger than the shank. That'd be a big problem, because if the shank of the stylus contacts the part before the probe tip, that'd throw off all your measurements. On the KP-1, there are three screws on the bottom of the probe that let you adjust the angle of the stylus. With the Drewtronics S5000s, there's no angular adjustment, so whatever angle you get after dialing out the runout is just what you get and will have to live with. This is the ring gauge that comes with the KP-1 probe if you choose to order it. You can see that mine happens to measure 24.9990 millimeters, which is 0.9842 inches. And I'm gonna hold it in this vise, squeezing it very, very lightly, just barely finger tight like that. You don't wanna clamp down on it too hard. You don't wanna turn it oval because we are gonna use it to calibrate our probe. So let's just run a quick probe, uh, bore probing routine on the ring gauge to see where we're at with the um, Centroid S5000 LED TTS probe. So here we can see uh, where the center of the bore is, but more importantly, what the diameter is. We got 0.9839 inches, and we know that our ring gauge diameter is 0 0.9842, so that's pretty damn good. Um, that puts us three tenths off the money, and my machine is only capable in moving in thousandths of an inch because I'm not using servo motors. I'm using closed loop steppers, so I don't even have three tenths of resolution. So we are well within the capability of the machine when we measure a bore. Let's just quickly probe a boss. And unfortunately, all I've really got to probe in terms of a boss is like the shank of this three quarter inch end mill. So we'll bring it into position and then uh, we'll run this boss probing routine in the uh, centroid acorn. I leave the boss diameter at one inch because it sort of overshoots the diameter when it travels over it. Then when we hit cycle start, you see that verify touch probe is functioning properly. And when you hit it with your finger, you see that animation, uh, that probe animation in the control moves. And you also see probe tripped and cleared messages in the dialog box, which is really nice. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but um, you definitely want to make sure that you are getting probe tripped messages in the dialog box. If you're not getting probe trip messages in the dialog box, even if that stylus is animating, there is a problem. And don't run your probe if you do not see probe trip messages in the dialog box. Ask me how I know.
And just like the boar, when this finishes up here, it parks itself right in the middle of the boss. But more importantly, it tells us the diameter. It is 0 0.7505. So we know it's three quarters of an inch, which is 750. We're getting 750 and 5 tenths. Again, 5 tenths is well within the 1,000th of an inch accuracy and resolution that my machine is capable of. So that's, um, that's pretty good. Let's run those exact same tests using the Centroid KP-1. We'll start out with the bore probing routine, probing the bore of the 24.9990 millimeter ring gauge. And this time, if you look in the control, you'll see there's two green ribbons at the bottom of that probe animation. One of them is flashing red as the probe registers a hit, but the bottom one, it says, I know it's small, it's hard to read on your screen, but it says probe detected, spindle inhibited. So that is the probe detect circuit, which is really nice. Anyhow, here we go. Okay, we've got 0.9844 inches, which puts us two tenths off money. That is one tenth of a thousandth of an inch better than we got with the uh, with the Drewtronics probe. And I don't really know what to make of that because my machine has a resolution of one thousandth of an inch. Like my closed loop stepper motors can only move in increments of one thousandth of an inch, but the encoders are a lot finer than that, and they're reading a win for the Centroid KP1. Uh, take that with a grain of salt, but that's what we're getting. Okay, now we are going to be probing the, the OD of this three-quarter inch end mill shank. Same way as we did with the Drewtronics probe. We're going to compare the results and see what we get with OD probing before we move on to that digitizing. And again, we see that probe detect circuit and that bottom green ribbon in the control animation. Now, I don't know if they offer Drewtronics probes with the probe detect circuit. Mine didn't come with one, and that's exactly why I snapped the probe that you saw earlier in this video. All right, let's have a look. So we got 0.7495 inches. So that is, that is five tenths of a thousandth of an inch off in the other direction. With the Drewtronics, we had 0.7505, so this one's a tie. So we ran some probing routines with both probes and we can compare them to known dimensions to see which ones perform better and all that. But let's take it a step further and now run some digitizing routines. We're going to start with a radial digitizing routine where with both probes, we're going to go around and touch many points all the way around the inside of that ring gauge to kind of compare the results and see which probes are tracking better. When uh, Centroid is done with these digitizing routines, it's gonna spit out a report that we can format and put in a CSV file. We can import it to SolidWorks. We can import it to Excel and do some analysis and we will do that later. And now just for completeness, we ran the radial digitizing routine on the inside of the ring gauge. Let's run the wall following digitizing routine on the outside of that three quarter inch shank. Um, when Centroid is done running these routines for both probes, it will spit out a very similar report that we can do the same thing with. We can bring it into Excel or SolidWorks or whatever and take a look at the actual registered probe hits to compare the probes and see which did a better job tracking or at least try to sniff something out of the data that we get in that table. So let's take a look at some of that data that we generated in the reports. This is basically the, the data that was generated in the reports here for the Drewtronics here for the KP1, and we've just done a little bit of number crunching here and here to generate these plots. These are the ring gauge plots. We also have some spreadsheets for the uh, the OD digitizing, which is the shank of that three quarter inch end mill. Again, we have Drewtronics, KP1, and here are the charts just kind of, in the charts tab just summarized. Let's take a look at what exactly is going on here, and let's focus on the ring gauge digitizing data first. So. This is the ring gauge digitizing data for the Drewtronics, and this is the ring gauge data for the KP1 probe. And just to sort of explain what is going on here is both of the green rings are like the theoretical perfect circles, and these, the blue and the orange, both on the KP1 and on this Drewtronics ring, these are the actual registered probe hits. And so if everything were perfect, all the blue, and the orange and the green should be perfectly lined up on both plots, but it's not. So we can take a look at the air and what exactly is going on. And it does appear that the KP1 does a better job of tracking the ring than the Drewtronics probe does. Now, uh, interestingly, there's kind of some similarities in this area, which makes me think that it's probably not the fault of either probe. This is probably something going on with my machine. Maybe it's backlash. Maybe it's run out, you know, I, I'm not entirely sure. And if any of you might have any ideas, please do let me know. But it does appear that the KP1 does a better job tracking on the ring gauge 
And the same is kind of true for the OD digitizing. So both of these are probe hits versus the perfect circle when we were digitizing the OD of that shank. Like if we take a look here um, at the Drewtronics, it looks like it deviates quite a bit more than the, um, than the KP1 does following the OD. And I know these plots look really bad, like how is any probe doing such a bad job tracking the OD, but these are exaggerated, like you can look at the scales here. Uh, these are exaggerated, these are very, very small increments, like on this chart specifically right here, one of these steps is, uh, is a thousandth of an inch. And like, just to put that into perspective, if we go over to SolidWorks, this is the KP1 OD. So this is the KP1 kind of tracking around that three quarter inch end mill. And I've overlaid this perfect circle, which is glowing blue right now. This is where the hits should be registering. And I've overlaid them here. These are the actual probe hits. If you see tiny little dots, this is the point cloud data that we got from that report. We actually imported it from that text file into SolidWorks. And when we overlay them, we're essentially looking at the same chart, just this one is to scale and you can see how close they are. So, you know, both of these probes are actually quite good in terms of tracking the OD. We're just really taking a microscope to it. But like, if we look at the KP1 OD and we take a look at like this area, we should see the hits actually inside the theoretical perfect circle, sort of in the bottom right, just right of the center line. And when we zoom in right here, we do in fact see that. We see that the hits are actually inside that perfect uh, circle. And we can also see like that in, let's take a look at the top dead center of the KP1 digitizing. You go over, take a look right here. We can see that the actual hits are outside the perfect circle, the same way they are in the plot. And so while it is really cool to visualize results like these, do take them with a grain of salt. My setup is a converted imported mill with imported ball screws and imported stepper motors. The mill's limitations are far greater than those of the probes, and it isn't exactly the perfect platform for this kind of testing. But at the end of all this, I still think that objectively, we can say the Centroid KP1 is the clear winner. I mean, it isn't the cheapest, but it is just plain better. So if budget's the priority, go with the Drewtronics. You're not gonna regret it. But the KP1's angular and radial probe adjustment probe detection circuit, replacement probe tips, and better performance do just make it the better probe. And now you don't have to fork out $700 to get your hands on something this good, which I think is going to be exciting for a lot of people. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.